All right, what's up tycoons? What's up traders? Today's video is another viewer request. We're going to take a look at GLDG as well as AG. Now this is a gold company, all right, and also a silver company. Um, there is some news that I'm going to cover real quick as well as go over some of the technical analysis. So make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I do these viewer requests every week. So if you want to see your stock in the next video, all you got to do is comment down below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Now, one of the ones, uh, one of the things I want to highlight, okay, is that um, they are, they just filed to launch the IPO for its subsidiary, US Gold Mining Inc. or USGO, right? They just filed a registration statement with its initial, uh, initial public offering, the IPO. Um, so that's some news. There's been a lot of news going around this company. Um, if you take a look, they actually just announced the appointment of David uh, Garofalo as the co-chair. All right. And gold mining, um, this company is is uh, basically what it is. All right. Is they control a resource stage gold and copper, gold and copper projects in Canada, USA, Brazil, Colombia and Peru. And they also own more than 21 million shares of Gold Royalty Corp, which is G-R-O-Y. All right, so um, definitely dive into some of the news a little bit more for sure. Uh, the news is about a week or two old, so it's not super, super brand new, uh, but it, it is some interesting news that they've been having going on here. Now, when it comes to the chart, okay, what I see here is a couple things. Um, currently, right now, we have this falling wedge pattern indicated by these two trend lines, and we are zigzagging in between here. If we were to get a breakout and this pattern was to be confirmed and go bullish, we should see a nice move back up to the dollar fifty to even dollar sixty range. That's where we're going to go in a perfect world environment if the chart pattern plays out perfectly. Okay, um, but we have to be realistic about a few things. So I have our Fibonacci levels up here. Now these are going to be our major levels of resistance, and we use these because nothing goes in a straight line down or in a straight line up, right? And so we can see that here that as we start to pull back, right? We pull back, we retrace, okay, up to around the fifty percent and sixty one point eight percent level. And then we continue that downtrend, right, where we put in a low and then a lower low. So now that we've got a new swing high and a new swing low, all right, we're starting to retrace a little bit. But if we want that uh, that bullish falling wedge to really play out fully, we're going to have to break through these retracement levels. OK, and so that's going to be 114, 119 and 124. Now, we're currently hovering right around the 200 SMA. You can see here we dip below a few times um, and then we really started to consolidate. Right. And we did have a golden cross here previously and we had some nice bullishness after the golden cross. That's where the 50 SMA crosses the 200 SMA. And you see there was a nice move, but ultimately that was just a healthy retracement to end up continuing the downtrend. Um so like I said, pay close attention to these three levels right here. If we do get a breakout or a retest of the trend line, ultimately, we're going to need to come up, consolidate and break through those retracement levels uh, to get that pattern to play out. Now, if we start trading below the 200 SMA and really, you know, staying below there, 95 cents is going to be a pretty big support level from the weekly time frame. OK, uh, and if we break 95 cents, then we have a demand zone down here from about 76 up to about um, let me see precisely where this is at uh, up to about 80 cents. OK, so that's going to be our pretty much our demand zone down below. Um, as you can see, you know, it is kind of choppy and this stock does tend to consolidate around earnings. So there is a good chance that we just consolidate and move sideways, you know, uh, right around that 95 to about a dollar 10 level, uh, we, there's a good chance we could consolidate and move sideways. If we take a look here, you know, this is its last earnings and you see, what does it do? It trades sideways, right? Consolidates and trades sideways over here. It's last earnings consolidate and trade sideways. So, um, you know, we may see more of that. That pattern doesn't have to repeat itself, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Uh, I really wouldn't be surprised if we don't get the bullish pattern to play out and we actually just consolidate, um, you know, in this range. Uh, that really wouldn't surprise me too much, honestly, if we just get some sideways choppy movement, ultimately before picking the next direction, whether it's down or whether it's up. Uh, we'll go ahead and hop on over to AG real quick. And AG, I actually want to start off on the uh, weekly time frame, because if we go to the weekly chart, um, things are a little bit more clear and we're seeing a couple more signals uh, than on the smaller time frames like the daily. Uh, we'll zoom in on our relative strength index right here, our RSI. And what we have is actually a bullish divergence. So uh, I had a pretty bad reaction to earnings, right? And dropped pretty hard. Okay, but take a look how we have a low right here. 
Okay, so we have this low over here, and then we get a lower low, right? So the stock's definitely in a downtrend, you would say. And then we actually have a low and a higher low on the relative strength index, right? So this is a bullish divergence. That's what that term is known as. And it could be an indicator we see some type of bullish activity, right? And we also had the huge overreaction on earnings uh, to the downside. And so we've already started to see some of this bullish divergence play out. If we zoom down to the daily time frame, okay, we do have a gap up to fill, right? That's what this blue box is right here. Um, this is, you know, this is the earnings and then this is the preceding day. And you see there's a gap in between these two candlesticks. These tend to fill about 90 to 95% of the time. And as you can see, we're doing a good job of trying to fill that gap up right now. So the gap is going to go all the way up to about $6.75 roughly. And we may see that gap fill sometime soon. These gaps, they tend to fill about 90% of the time historically. It's just a matter of when. So, you know, we could come up to this, find some resistance, and then head back down. That's definitely a possibility. But for right now, it seems like price action is being drawn towards that gap. And there is the potential we could fill it here sometime soon. Now, uh, very similar to uh, the last chart that we looked at, we have our major retracement levels of resistance here. Uh, so if we do continue to get some upwards movement and we go through this gap, uh, and let's say we go on a really strong rally here over the next few days or weeks, um, these are going to be the major levels that we need to pay attention to, 739, 785, and 832. If we go back to our weekly time frame, we really haven't had any type of retracement after this really big move down. Uh, we've kind of just moved almost in a straight line down. And so if we do get some type of a retracement, these are going to be the areas that you want to be really cautious at because we just took a look at the last chart. And we know whenever you get those retracements uh, and you come up to your major levels, there is a chance that you could continue that downtrend. Now to break through the downtrend, right? What you want to see is consolidation through these areas ultimately and break through those major retracement levels. So 739, 785, and 832, if we continue to rise, those are going to be some key areas to watch out for. Uh, pay attention to the gap fill on the daily chart right around 675 as there is a chance we could get that gap fill sometime soon. Uh, one thing I do want to know is that a half gap fill would be very bearish. So if we come up to this range and let's say we only fill half of this gap, right, and then we start to reverse, that's going to be a bearish signal. And most likely it's going to be preceded by some red days uh, in AG. So, you know, I would set some alerts right around the gap. Uh, at maybe the beginning of the gap, the half of the gap or the top of the gap. If you want to try and, you know, do some short term day trades to try to capture that, you can have a tight stop loss. Of course, none of this video is financial advice, just kind of breaking down the charts and the data that's on the screen. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I do these viewer requests every week. So if you want to see your stock in the next video, all you got to do is comment down below.